Hey y'all, this week we talk about how to have success with your casserole crock, and we also reveal a big secret. All while having a whole lot of fun. Which episode is episode three? Four? You sure? Are you sure? Right. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to episode four of season two of As Good As It Gets. I'm Chris. And I'm Mikey. And this is a weekly chat from our kitchen. Mm-hmm. Sort of. Yes. It's also our living room. But, but we'll but, get to that in a minute. Yeah. We got some business to handle. Well, there's some people going to say, well, there's some business to handle. Where y'all at? Yes. And that is something that we will we will have a confession here in a little bit. And we're going to tell you guys all about it. But first, we've been being asked by everybody who is the giveaway winner. And we do have our giveaway winner. Miss Debbie McMurtry. Yes. She won. She won. We got a hold of her last night, finally. Yep. And she's like, I won something? Yes. Yes, you did. Yes. And so she has probably in her hands now a mini casserole crock because good old Amazon said that they were going to get it there. Um, and then we also have an apron going mm -hmm. her way from our apron shop. Um, and so she's going to get that. Hopefully, uh, Debbie, if you want to, and you totally don't have to, but if you want to send us a snapshot of you with your apron and your crock, we can feature you later on in an upcoming episode. If you don't, yes, you can still keep we it. We always love, and that goes for everybody. If you are cooking a recipe from the website, or you have a crock posse t-shirt, or an apron, or um, a sticker, or sticker, you can definitely take a snap of that and email that to Chris at recipes that crock.com or Mikey at recipes that crock.com or Aunt Lou at recipes that crock.com and sport your posse pride. Yes, and we will definitely start doing shout outs mm -hmm. again. We were doing that last season and mm -hmm. we had so much fun seeing you guys enjoy the uh the life as a crock posse member there you go. <laughs> so speaking of which um i do want to give a little bit of an update we were all laughing at my math errors last um last episode and how i ordered these itty bitty teeny weeny um Pot stickers. Well, now we're calling pot stickers and sticking all over every crock pot we can find. Um, I ordered these, but I thought that they were going to be bumper sticker size for Miss Ad's Patreon Sticker Club. And so the big ones have finally arrived so that now we can get those. And by the time that this airs, we will have already started the mailing to all of our Sticker Club um, members over on Patreon. Um, but we thought it might be fun since um, since we don't have a current giveaway going on. We're still in the giving spirit. W yes, that we might do a fun giveaway of some of these pot stickers to about five Crock Posse members random that comment down below. And it can be any kind of comment about today's show. And we're just going to randomly choose five of you and reach out to you, get your address, and mail you a, a Crock Pot or a pot sticker for one of your slow cookers at home that just says that you're a proud Crock Posse member. So we thought that might be fun. Um, if you want to check out the sticker club um, for Miss Ad over on Patreon, we will leave the link down below. Right here. It's yes. also going to be in the description too. So don't forget that on every YouTube video, there's this little description down below. And if you click show more, it'll show you all the stuff, our mailing addresses, our heights, our current hat size, stuff like that. <laughs> And uh, um, we'll make sure and leave the Patreon link down below. You know, with these bumper stickers, they sure are going to be traveling all over the place. They aren't sure they? are. In fact, I know of a couple bumper stickers that will be traveling very soon. While y'all are watching this episode when it comes out, we're going on our first camping trip. And if you notice, we are sitting in our new camper. Yes. And so that's been a big secret that we've been keeping. We are preparing. And by preparing, we mean we are learning everything from the very basics to uh, camera angles and everything else. We are preparing to take our show on the road. You film this. Oh my gosh. Use your. Uh, we're just. I hope. Just make sure you're over far enough. Please don't let there be any. <gasps> oh, 
you're fine. Just they're gonna have to just, stop. They're gonna, they're have, gonna have, to have to stop. stop. Move. I move back, Chris. Move back. I can't see. You're fine. Oh. You're fine. Now don't go over too quick. You're fine. I don't consider this fine. I can't. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> How's your prayer life, dear? If you'd take a coal and put it up my butt, I'd have just made you a shiny diamond. Oh my gosh. You're doing laundry, I'm just saying. <laughs> Alright, so piece of cake. We got ourselves a travel trailer and we're going camping. We did a little practice last weekend and we went down to Chris's mom and dad's and um, you'll actually see that footage hopefully this week. Uh, we went down to her mom and dad's and camped in their yard. Um, <laughs> they went on a motorcycle trip and while they were gone they said you can't use the house so stay in the yard. No, no, no. That's not what they said. Um, we are preparing, like I said, uh, we're preparing to um, take our crock pot on the road. We're going to crock the nation, so to speak, next summer. And so we are practicing this fall, learning how everything, how a camper works, because it's not the same as just going home. Everything from learning how electricity works in a camper to learning how, how to pull it, how the, to park it, <laughs> the water and, and water usage and everything else. But we're learning all of that so that next summer um, we can take the crock posse along <laughs> as we travel um this great nation see chris grew up with a family that loved to travel your mom and dad took you everywhere all yes. over the united states she's been um from the east coast to the west coast the north side the south side yep. she's been everywhere me i haven't been further than branson missouri yeah now, love branson anybody there totally dig branson missouri and for those of you that don't know we live in indiana so that's not really that far yeah we're kind of <laughs> almost sort of in the middle but really <laughs> You know, my my growing up, our our trips were always local, and we you know we did some camping trips and stuff like that. But it was and, and they were a lot of fun. But I never really got to see the country much, so we're changing that. And as I'm getting a little bit older, I always said I don't want to drive. I don't want to drive <laughs> now. I want to drive. And I think so we're gonna... I think also because um, how Mike used to work for a job that really didn't give him a lot of time to where we could travel. Mm -hmm. um, like we could go to a destination but not make the journey the destination right. and so that's what we're going to actually do and we're going to bring you guys along mm -hmm. for the ride and so it has already been quite the journey just the last couple weeks <laughs> of us learning and um definitely uh uh, having to um, not take ourselves so seriously. There is a fly that definitely wants to be in the show. He just keeps circling, just so you I know. <laughs> but Did that's you part make of that rhyme. That that's, so cool. No, that's part of the part of camping. But um, but no, we wanted we want to be able to take you guys along, and we have we have realized that not only is it going to be fun from a travel standpoint for maybe you guys to see some things that maybe you haven't seen um we're definitely going to have cooking segments throughout the whole thing and you'll see even next week where aunt lou and i were testing my camper kitchen and it was all kinds of chaotic um but it also is quite hilarious um it can it well from an outsider's point of view, it is <laughs> from the driver's standpoint, holy moly, it's, yeah. to it's totally different, <laughs> hauling thousands of pounds behind you. Yes. Um, but we're learning and yeah. we're having a good time with it. So yeah. we're, we're going to do a big camping trip this week, uh, this coming week with uh, her mom and dad. And I'm going to go do some fishing and get some experience um, on how we're going to film in and out of the, the camper. And uh, like right. Chris said, with angles and stuff like that, get some really cool up in the air footage of everything yeah and uh give us some practice before we have to pack it up for the winter not use it for a few months and then next summer we're going on the road and yes. i want and to we'll go we'll share more of all those details as they develop yes but we thought we would let you guys know because we do want to share some of our fall footage with you and um get uh, make sure that you kind of got are in on what's going on 
So if there's any other folks out there who do RV living, any kind of any kind of travel vacationing like that where you do it uh, camping, camping yeah. um, maybe some tips would be great down in the comments below. What do you normally do to survive a trip? <laughs> now, now Grant, I know this isn't really survival because this is what I technically would be called, <laughs> this would technically be called glamping, but um, still traveling away from home. Um, what are some good tips for us to know before we get started on this little thing? Yeah, tips on just how, any kind of beginner tips with uh, your camper trailer and or tips on like must see places to visit. I'm not sure that we're gonna be able to get to all of it next summer, but we're hoping if this is successful and you guys enjoy seeing all the traveling and all the different places that we take our camper kitchen, um, that, um, that, that we might be doing this more often. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other piece of this is, even if you aren't an RVer, aren't a camper, aren't into camping, um, we're gonna be sharing tips along the way and recipes of how to vacation in an economical way um, by using your slow cooker. So that's one of the big things is like we started doing that when we were traveling a lot, even when we were destination traveling, you know, having to fly. I was like literally packing my slow cooker inside my um, my bags that I checked at the airport so that we could use our slow cooker to help us keep our um, travel bill down. And so even if you're, you prefer to uh, vacation or travel um, and stay in a hotel, a lot of what we're gonna be sharing is going to be something you can do that. Or if you're not into, you're not traveling or that's not something that is um, you're able to do at this time, the recipes are still great from home. So we're gonna be sharing all kinds of, so there should be a little bit of everything for everyone mm -hmm. with all kinds of fun stuff. And I'm sure there's gonna be lots of, um, of, uh, creative, uh, mistakes and humor along the way to make it maybe even if, <laughs> if none of that's your cup of tea, maybe seeing as bumble through this might be. <laughs> Getting this travel trailer has really gave me a humbling lesson to realize that I am not perfect. Yes. And it has taught me patience in a way that I just, you know, everything just seems to take a lot longer. So we are learning and we're excited and we are so excited to bring the crock posse along with us. Oh, another update really quickly. Did we talk about last week that you're going to become our gadget guy? Did we talk about uh, that? I think maybe sort of. Yeah. It's my new title. I'm a, <laughs> I am all good media's gadget guy. Uh, <laughs> but we've had a fun week uh, with gadget guy. <laughs> Are we gonna <laughs> if anybody hasn't seen the instant pot perfect pot roast segment that Aunt Lou and I did that went up um, Thursday Thursday yeah uh, Wednesday for our patreon folks um, go back and watch that oh. and you'll see why I almost lost my gadget guy job. <laughs> Let's just say all future Gadget Guy episodes will be supervised. Yes, and <laughs> instead of a cowboy hat, I might be using a hard hat. Oh, no, no. <laughs> so he did survive, and he was briefed afterwards. <laughs> and for it's those of y'all who don't know what I'm talking about, whenever you're using an Instant Pot, let it release on its own. Well, don't do a it, quick release when there's gravy some, involved. Yeah, for some, for some, um, for some recipes you don't do that. And I will, I will say he was briefed beforehand too. It's just I was in a hurry. I think he realized afterwards that I was serious. <laughs> so anyhow, but no. Um, so now it's time to talk about this week's Friday favorites. Yay! This is some of my favorite stuff to talk about. Yes. And so Aunt Lou put together Friday favorites that went out yesterday, um, and it was all about Asian-inspired dishes. And so what is your favorite Asian-inspired dish on the site? Hands down, it is the bourbon chicken. Now, some folks are going to say bourbon chicken is not an Asian dish. It's a... Uh, uh, some people think it's a Cajun dish or whatever. I've seen it in Asian restaurants, so I'm going for it mainly because I like it and I wouldn't mind cooking that sometime soon. Okay. <laughs> it's really we'll good let, rice. We'll let you go. So, okay, me, that works. All right. Well, and for me, my favorite is the mushu pork. I just love it. I love the vegetables in it. It's just, mm -hmm. it just, it's just a yummy kind of non-traditional slow cooker recipe. So I, that's the one that I really like. 
Um, but our readers tend to, well, a lot of them really like Mikey's bur the bourbon chicken mm -hmm. that he's referring to. But they also like the easy teriyaki chicken. Those are in Aunt Lou's Roundup along with a handful of others that you might want to try if you like Asian-inspired dishes. Cool. All right. What do you say that we go on to reader emails? There we go. Reader emails. I really think we need to rename this segment because we've been grouping all their emails together and kind of just answering reader questions. I know uh, it's a it's a thing that we keep going like I call them reader questions and you call it reader emails, but we we I don't think we've read an email this season yet. Oh, well maybe then we should call it reader comments questions and emails. <laughs> That's a little long. <laughs> But anyhow, um, we got several questions this week and several emails from people wanting to talk about the casserole crock. And it's a common question on the website. A lot of people get the casserole crock, which we have right here. It's three and a half quarts. And it is the, um, it is the equivalent to a 9 by 13 pan that you would stick in the oven kind of thing. And um, a lot of people really love this slow cooker, as do we, but some folks struggle with it a little bit. And so I just wanted to get, kind of recap our philosophy when we use the casserole crock and then also um, just talk a little bit about it. Because all this is, is a slow cooker um, in general. And so I think sometimes people look at it and think it's like a completely different um, unit in their kitchen. And technically, technically, you can cook anything in it that you could cook in a regular slow cooker. You can get away with maybe even putting six quart dishes in this three and a half quart dish because it lets things spread out a lot. However... There are some things, in my personal opinion, that cook up better than others in this. And it's kind of not, it's kind of counterintuitive. It's kind of not what you would think yeah. would, would work in this. And so, when you look at this, naturally, what would you think? Cake. Cake, right? Because that's what you put in a 9 by 13 pan. And actually... Of all of my slow cookers, this is probably the last one that I would reach for, for yep. a cake. Just because I have really learned that anything that needs to rise up in a slow cooker, it's going to be more difficult for it to rise up in a slow cooker. And the casserole crock has spread things out so far, it's really hard for that center to get done. And so I don't like using my casserole crock for a cake. I will say my browning slow cookers, the ones with the non-stick coating that are typically more rectangular in shape, those are probably my favorites to bake up cakes and stuff like that. Um, and there's actually bake settings. On, yeah, on our, well, our on the multi our, yeah, the multi-cookers, yeah. there mm -hmm. is a bake setting. You can go, but that's going to go faster than the slow cooker cakes, just heads up. Um, but the, um, but a traditional oval slow cooker that cooks evenly, I would prefer that over this because things tend to grab the sides of those slow cookers better and they rise up a lot better. Um, another question I get is like lasagnas and those kinds of things and like layered, um, casseroles that need to set up and, and kind of, you know, they don't really cook up. Um, but they kind of, they just need to set up. And again, this is not where, this is not, I would think that this would be perfect. And we've cooked, it'll cook. Don't get me wrong. It'll cook up. But it it sets up better in a traditional slow cooker than it does in the casserole crock. Because for some reason, it just doesn't like to set up the same. Mm. So what we end up doing, what we do like the casserole crock for, is anything that is like a meat dish or a casserole that you're going to spoon out, like that just really needs all the flavors to kind of be evenly distributed. 
we love the casserole crop for that. So like pork chop dishes. I bet you that pork chop stuffing dish would go great. Oh yes, perfect. So pork chops, chicken breasts, chicken thighs, um, beef, beef, anything that you want to even out those flavors and make sure everything. Uh, we do chicken legs in here a lot. Um, you can do that. Um, any kind of casserole that's going to have like a mixture of all kinds of stuff like our broccoli um, cauliflower um, cheese casserole we put in this um, our bacon broccoli chicken is it yeah bacon broccoli chicken we put in this and it lets ever like the cheese get all over every single piece and it's like perfect to kind of let that happen mm -hmm. this is also good for i heard a sound outside if you saw me make a face um this is also good for like dump cakes because they're not gonna bake up like so things like those kinds of things i also use this um for some of my egg casseroles because even though they do have to get done in the middle the eggs tend to cook up fine for me in this uh, but that's just my opinion. Other people might use it for more things. I'm just saying if you're struggling with having success, think kind of the opposite of what you thought you were going to make in here. And um, you might use your traditional slow cooker to make dessert and then make your meat dish in here. And so we love this. We love this for like potlucks and for serving lots of people because it makes making portion sizes a lot easier because it's clear it's kind of like using a casserole dish and so it makes that a lot easier and so we love the casserole crock it's just we have more success with it when we use it for meat dishes mm -hmm. and non rise up um, casseroles and those kinds of things so hopefully that helps um, We've tested, we have a whole list of all the things we've tested, and some cakes do okay in it. Some have done fine for us, but I still think things perform better in a traditional cakes, or things that need to rise up perform better in a traditional slow cooker. Cool. So that answers that question. I know I had several people asking me about that this week, so hopefully that helps. If that didn't answer your question, email us at chris at recipes.crop.com or mikey at recipes.crop.com or Aunt Lou at recipes.crop.com with some questions, and yep. we will be happy to answer them for you. Sometimes when you put them in the comments down below, it's possible we won't see them because we get a lot of comments. Yes. So make sure you email us, and we will try to get back to you as soon as we can. Yes, absolutely. All right, so now we're ready to share the menu, and this week, Mikey put together the menu. He's, That's right. The gadget guy is going to start doing some blogging. Yes, he's going to start putting together our weekly menu every week, and so I'm I'm going to be surprised to know what's on the menu this week. Well, let's surprise you with Monday, and for Monday, how about the Crock-Pot Mississippi Whole Chicken? Oh, yep, Aunt yep. Lou made that. Mm -hmm. that. Anything Mississippi is good. Anything with a whole chicken is going to be good. So you put that together, it's going to be good. I shouldn't be surprised that Mississippi made the list when you put together the list. Don't be surprised if there's a <laughs> lot of Mississippi going on on these lists. Uh, for Tuesday, how about some crock pot Taco Joes to go along with Taco Tuesday? Oh, those are so yummy. Yeah. I love eating them open-faced with like a fork. Mm -hmm. So Or put a hot dog down there with it. Oh it. my goodness, rock the world. Uh, <laughs> so on Wednesday, it could be leftover day or that's also our soup day. So if you want to do our crock pot unstuffed cabbage soup, you will not be disappointed. This is super, super popular with our readers. And it also we also have an instant pot version of mm -hmm. it. So you could, you could do it either way. Yep, yep. Very yummy. Very good. Thursday. How about some meatloaf? But not just regular meatloaf. How about a bacon ranch meatloaf? It's got bacon in it. That's enough. Isn't that isn't that one that won one of your battles last year? It did. I think. It is a battle. Yeah, there. so and we did a video on that one. Rightfully so. Yep, yep. And then you're going to... And then we're going to make that along with our easy homemade yeast rolls in the slow cooker. Is that mom's recipe? That's mama's recipe. Oh, yummy, yummy. A little yummy. homage to my mother-in-law because, <laughs> you know, you got to stay in good with the mother-in-law. <laughs> Um, for Friday, how about a crock pot pizza tater tot casserole? That is kids an, totally dig this. Yes, that is an Aunt Lou recipe through and through. Pizza, tater Two tots. tots. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it as well. Uh, and then for our snack this week, crock pot roasted Cajun pecans. Now, 
If you haven't seen the video for that, go back and check it out. It was one of my favorite videos to do with her. It was fun. And they're also easy. They're high in protein and they taste They are fantastic. so yummy. So yummy. People love that recipe. Mm -hmm. And it's fall. So when you think fall, you think apples. At least we do. So how about for the dessert this week, the crock pot apple crumble cobbler. Yummy. That's a mouthful to say. <laughs> I bet it would be a great mouthful to have. So yes. give that a try and uh, let us know. Would you have coffee or would you have milk with that? Uh -huh. Me, big glass of milk right here. <laughs> and then also for our our breakfast this week would be the savory crock pot breakfast casserole. Yes. Now, I like savory. It is getting chilly outside around here, and so... She's still in the blanket. Uh, I have an blanket. electric blanket on right now. But I'm just saying, this is like the season that I just love all those breakfast casseroles. Mm. Like, the, they're just so yummy. We have a new one coming out in a couple weeks, maybe. But anyhow, that I just recently tried, and I just keep thinking about it. Going, is that the man, one that, did for our camping trip? Yes. And so, I made, a, and this will come out... No, I'm actually, I'm not going to share. It's just a breakfast casserole. It's a secret. And it was very yummy. And as soon as it comes out, I will definitely let you guys know. But it's so, so yummy. And I'm I just, a picky breakfast eater. Yes. And I was very happy with yes. it. Yes. And good. so I think that that's the way with most of our, you know, most of our breakfast casseroles. Most of our just slow cooker breakfast. You, I mean, you kind of got three kinds of breakfast when it comes to slow cooker. You've got egg-based, which are like all the egg casseroles, and I just love them. Then you've got the sweet-based, where let's just be honest, you're having dessert for breakfast and it's allowed. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> and then there is like the oatmeal kind of base, which also can be a little sweet in how you make it. And we just love all those kinds of different flavors. So that's really, really, really Yummy. So all that's coming. How'd I do um, for the menu this week? I think you did pretty good. Yes. I'm going to keep my job. <laughs> so don't forget, make sure you comment on something down below. So maybe you will randomly be one of our Crock Posse members. It's going to get a pot sticker in the mail. Um, we'll reach out. We'll we'll leave it open for this week um, but so that we'll have drawn those names by the time next week's show shows. Congratulations so. again to Debbie McMurtry for winning yes. the mini casserole crock and an an apron they're coming at you right now or maybe you got hopefully you got one already yes so send us your questions send us your comments bye, bye. <laughs> oh yuck That should have peeped out, so I know where to start. Okay. Should have. Yes. Okay, let's get started again. This week, we talk about how to have sex with your... Or success oh with your... God. Success no. with your casserole crock. No. You are not putting that in there. That's not something you want to do. It will burn. I'm sitting here. You always sit on my left. No, I have my electric blanket to keep me warm, so no. Um, I'm gonna do it like this because I said no. up here my head's cut off. You need to do something different then. I am not going back around that couch. Fix it. <laughs> what if we do? Is your head cut off now? I'm good. You give me my blanket back. <laughs> How to have success with your casserole, Brock? Oh my Brock. gosh. You can tell what's on my mind!